स्टार्ट ओके हेलो एवरीबडी आई एम डॉक्टर कविता देवानी जोशी एंड जस्ट इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी वर टुगेदर एंड वी वर स्टार्टिंग द चैप्टर इवोल्यूशन ओके सो इवोल्यूशन वी हैड बिगैन विद एंड नाउ वी हैव टू कंटिन्यू इट सो लेट मी टेल यू दैट इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैड स्टार्टेड अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्टरी पार्ट ऑफ इट अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट वी स्टार्टेड अबाउट द थियरीज ऑफ इवोल्यूशन एंड Uh, we talked about the origin of life. Okay, so now it's the time to move forward, and uh, we are going to talk about evidences of evolution. Okay, so uh, before that, I want to tell you something that there is uh, the there is one name which is associated with this chapter very frequently, and you must have heard about this name that is Charles Robert Darwin. So many people they do not know. Uh, his complete name but at least uh, they know this name darwin so he uh, had a lot of contributions to uh, these studies okay and uh, as you can see uh, you can see that i have written his complete name so he was very small 22 years old and he uh, he had gone for uh, with, with his ship for exploring the flora and fauna that means plants and animals of the sea so he uh, his ship's name was hms beagle please remember this name so this is a thing to just remember and it is many times there in the questions you'll find it so uh, he tried to explore the animals and plants so uh, he talked about characteristics okay so first of all i just i'm just uh, giving a brief idea about the things so characteristics means details of appearance or behavior okay so details of uh, details of appearance details of appearance or behavior for example if i, I if i talk about your appearance you are a tetrapod you have four legs uh, four legs four limbs you don't have four legs four limbs you have two legs and two uh, hand, and this is your arms that means four limbs so details of appearance or uh, uh, you can say uh, behavior they are called as uh, characteristics okay of any organism so whatever characteristic one knows two years all these are uh, the part of the same so he said that more the similarities more the similarities between the organisms right so i can write over here that more the similarities means more closely they are related more closely they are related this we can say okay so more closely they are uh, related and we can say that they must be sharing uh, any common ancestor so must be must share common ancestor for example you and your cousin brother if they are uh, they look same uh, uh, there are certain uh, similarities between you so his and your common ancestor is your grandfather and grandmother obviously because uh, your grandfather is having two sons so uh, one is your uh, cousin uh, uh, the son of uh, him and one is you from your father right so uh, they the common ancestor becomes grandfather and grandmother so more the similarities more closely they are related and they must share uh, common ancestor in their history that uh, that observation he uh, talked about and he also talked about even dissimilarities and he said he talked about basically two things one was uh, fitness but here uh, fitness is related to reproductive fitness and another thing which he talked about is natural selection okay but already before him one scientist whose name is alfred wallis alfred russel wallis so this alfred russel uh, russel wallis he gave uh, theories of uh, evolution due to natural selection even prior to darwin so he gave a theory theory of uh, theories of evolution theory of evolution due to natural selection okay so he already had contributed to it and uh, these were these uh, these favored or helped darwin as well so theories of evolution due to natural selection was already given by him when he was uh, 
uh, studying uh, he was doing his studies on malay archipelago so he was doing his uh, studies on malay archipelago and here this there is a malay race okay and archipelago means a cluster a chain of islands on on southeastern asia and, and australia side so there he was studying flora and fauna and that's at the at that point of time he gave this theories of evolution got it so now uh, how if how the organisms evolve all these things can be studied just by studying about evidences of evolution and the first evidence which i am going to explain you is going to be fossil or paleontological evidences paleontological paleontological evidences paleonto i should write okay pale on uh, paleontological evidences okay uh, right so now uh, the thing comes the thing comes that this means fossil fossil evidences so to understand it you first of all you need to understand that what is a fossil so traces or preserved remains fossil means traces traces or preserved remains of hard parts of hard parts of so you can write impressions also preserved remains or impressions of of hard parts of hard parts of organism hard dead parts of organisms okay so hard dead parts of organisms like bones okay uh, like like uh, shell bones teeth etc bones teeth etc even not of organisms or of plants also uh, like wood you can uh, say etc so uh, the plants or the animals who are dead so the uh, the leaves or the branches of the plants dead branches and then uh, which have been fall fall off uh, fallen off and then you have this uh, uh, dead parts of uh, organisms animals like shell and bones they just get uh, into the soil and after millions of years so that is a very important thing to be written after millions of years they are formed okay uh, after millions of years because they take many years millions of years to get formed so a fossil is formed because what happens is in sedimentary rocks layer by layer layer by layer these hard parts they get covered by the layers of soil so this is happened by happening by sedimentation uh, that is layer to layer deposition layer by layer deposition and it is happening in which rocks your sedimentary rocks got it so that's how you can define fossil and uh, when we talk about them so there uh, the the time the time zone to study evolution has been divided into era period epoch so that uh, we can understand understand it in a in an easy way for example you also divide your day uh, for example you also divide your task in uh, in time durations and time zones so uh, you say that uh, uh, that i have to perform i have to perform this task in one month so in that one month for 10 days i'll be doing that for uh, for remaining 5 days i'll be doing that and like that and uh, now uh, in one day also for these many hours i'm going to study this subject and uh, for the remaining hours i'm going to study this subject and then minutes then seconds so we have divided the time into different uh, areas no so that's how evolution to study evolution we have divided the time this time into small small zones so in the earlier era which is the uh, which is you can call it the largest uh, time zone okay biggest or longest time zone that that time duration so uh, 
so uh, in that in the previous era what you will see is uh, there were no fossils because there were no organisms so uh, when they die when they will die they will get embedded into the soil only then the fossil will be able to form so in in the latest era cenozoic era you will find a uh, lot of uh, fossils of many organisms right and uh, similarly we can uh, say that uh, different different dinosaurs fossils we have seen like uh, brontosaurus so brontosaurus is a herbivore uh, herbivorous dinosaur okay so i can write over here brontosaur so this is considered as a herbivorous dinosaur herbivorous dinosaur and then we have this uh, what should i say mm, your tyrannosaurus this is very important so you have to remember this tyranno tyrannosaurus and this is a carnivorous dinosaur with flash eating dagger like teeth okay so carnivorous and flash eating obviously so that means the same flash eating um, and we can see that it is having dagger like teeth okay so very sharp teeth and uh, considered as one of the longest also uh, so you have to remember this is important t-rex it is called as tyrannosaurus rex and then uh, here when we are talking about fossils so we have to talk about missing link or uh, connecting link or transitional link obviously uh, i guess you have got the idea that i am talking about archaeopteryx okay uh, so transitional link you can see right uh, say this so missing means it is not present right now so it is missing transitional and connecting because it is considered as a connecting link between birds and reptiles so here we can write between reptiles and birds and it was found in late jurassic or initial cretaceous period so that cretaceous period what is that you'll get to know uh, and apart from that uh, it is kept at british museum london nowadays and it was found at solenhofen germany bavaria uh, it is a place over there so there it was found okay by andreas wagner uh, in 1861 andreas wagner okay so obviously if i'm saying that it is a connecting link between reptiles and birds so it must be having uh, the characters of reptiles as well as birds both right so uh, let us see the characters of reptiles present over here so it is it looks somewhat like this so as you can see uh, that i am again and again saying that it has characters of both so it uh, appears like this so can you see this uh, these claws these are the characters of your uh, this uh, reptiles and then this these are the feathers of birds okay so these are the feathers of birds which are here which can be seen here itself like this okay so it is having feathers overall like this okay uh, this archaeopteryx and this way okay uh, so this is how it appears it has a beak uh, and it has claws as i told you so i should have drawn them over here also so these are the claws okay so pelvic girdle was like reptiles first of all uh, pelvic girdle part was like reptiles as i told you it is having claws okay it is having claws uh, like this okay then we can write that free caudal vertebrae it has so free caudal vertebrae and the body axis is was also uh, somewhat like reptiles so we can write over here body axis then it was having teeth normally birds do not have teeth and then weak sternum weak sternum right so weak sternum then uh, apart from this uh, non pneumatic bones uh, non pneumatic bones means uh, they are not hollow like birds so non pneumatic 
bones uh, can you see there are so many characters of reptiles in this organism okay what else uh, these are a long tail also was there so you can write that also right uh, but if i talk about the characters of birds no so i can write here for you characters of birds so here a beak is found uh, just as birds so here um, i am writing this uh, beak and here feathers are present were, were present in it so feathers were there and foreling forelimbs modified into feathers or wings you can say and hind limbs just like birds okay and the last thing uh, fusion of skull bones that means fused skull bones just they are found in uh, case of birds so this was all about your archaeopteryx but uh, apart from this uh, if i talk about uh, fossils more so there uh, the fossils which are formed they are formed by the process of petrification and petrification means a molecule to molecule replacement of organic by inorganic materials like uh, silica iron pyrite etc so you can say in short molecule to molecule replacement molecule to molecule uh, replacement right okay and then uh, we can say that here different types of fossils can be there so when i talk about these uh, types of uh, fossils they can be in the form of mold so mold means exact replica of the organism uh, so exact replica and then we have a compression so compression means that the outline is left only and the internal structure of the organism of the plant it has gone it has been replaced so only carbon film carbon film or outline is left as a fossil you can see but by looking at that outline at least you can identify that this was the, this is the fossil of that particular organism coprolite coprolite means the uh, fossil of feces so uh, here you can write feces turned into fossils feces turned into fossil okay uh, and it is very difficult to identify the organisms through it obviously then we have uh, uh, the pseudo fossils pseudo means false uh, so all should understand that they are not true fossils but what happens is the uh, minerals of plants they get crystallized in the crevices of the rocks in the uh, you know slits and uh, crevices of the rocks and they appear like plant fossils so crystallized uh, minerals appearing as crystallized minerals right appearing as uh, fossils appearing as fossils they are called as pseudo fossils then we have another uh, which is um, micro fossils or palino fossils so micro fossil or um, palino fossil this means these are the fossils of pollen grains spores etc so these are the fossils of pollen grains pollen grains or uh, you can say spores etc right so they help you to identify the plants and they also helped in the uh, uh, in finding the components of hydrocarbons like they are formed from lipid rich remains and uh, algae marine and terrestrial both so uh, that's how they give us different different types of details and there are a certain uh, uh, there are certain fossil parks like birbal sahani institute okay so this is your birbal sahani institute at least you should uh, remember this name because here you will find many uh, fossils this is bot botanical one so uh, lucknow in lucknow it is there so it is having more than 
200 million I guess fossils apart from this Raj Mahal Hills Behar okay Raj Mahal Hills Behar right and then apart from that Urisa you can give the example of Mandla District MP okay Mandla District MP right so this is how MP means Madhya Pradesh there you can uh, they are having many many fossils 100 mil, uh, years ago 100 years uh, I should not have used that million term but yes uh, very old 150 years ago, uh, old you can say million years old so that's how uh, you can say that very very old fossils are there and protected and uh, they are studying them one by one and fossils can also be uh, kept in preservatives okay so they will be uh, they will be you know in a good state so those preservatives can be oil so those preservatives can be oil uh, snow amber etc so oil snow amber amber etc amber is a resin or resinous secretion from uh, from your uh, plants okay so that's how we have talked about these fossils now you can also determine the age of fossils by methods like relative method so the first method which i am explaining you is relative method okay so relative method means you just have to compare that whether the fossil is found uh, near to the earth surface or uh, deep down in the earth surface so first case is if fossil found if fossil found near earth surface near earth's near earth's surface then we can say that it is a recent fossil recent early an organism has died but comparatively if fossil found deep uh, down so that means it is an old organism who died earlier long backs fossil right so that's how we can uh, uh, tell the age of predict about the age of fossils but then the second method is radioactive method radioactive method which is also called as absolute because absolute means fixed so absolute dating method you can also call it carbon dating method uranium dating method also so we can write over here carbon dating or uranium dating method why because here uh, we will be talking about the radioactive isotopes okay so uh, let me tell you that this here what happens is a uh, radioactive isotopes you must have heard about so radioactive ones are the unstable ones and when they converted they get converted into non radioactive ones so they become stable so for example what happens is that here I am writing radioactive isotope and here I am writing non radioactive non radioactive so the first one is potassium 40 and here it gets converted into a this was your unstable this is your unstable but it gets later on converted into a stable form so it gets converted into argon 40 and then we have uranium 238 which gets converted into pb lead 207 similarly we have uh, carbon 14 so it gets converted into nitrogen 14 so uh, you can say that uh, when half of the concentration of carbon is getting converted into a non radioactive isotope so the time uh, which it takes is called as half life so I guess you uh, also deal with this in your chemistry part so high half life means the um, the time which is taken for the half of the concentration of carbon uh, radioactive carbon to get converted into non radioactive stable one um, so for carbon it is five seven three zero years approximately so it takes 
it uh, it takes these many years to get half of it to get converted into non radioactive stable one so for this is for carbon and uh, for potassium it is more uh, it is in billions of years approximately 1.3 billions of years so you can think of that uh, they take a lot of time but you can for example you have got this fossil and this fossil so you can check that if in this fossil there is more carbon and if there is very less carbon so this is the recent one because there is no degradation yet because it takes millions of years and in this one if there is a lot of degradation happened so this is considered as an old fossil so they give you the absolute readings uh, and that's how you can uh, you can identify or determine the age of fossils we have electron resonance spin method which is uh, which is a very advanced method electron spin resonance method and after that on second number you can take the name of potassium argon method which i explained right so this was all about the fossils but now uh, we have to talk about geological time scale okay so it's time to study about a very important topic and it will get give you uh, the details about more things apart from that let me uh, tell you that you will find one diagram in your ncrt where these kind of arrows must be must be formed and they must have represented different different organisms so uh, they have written brachiosaurus stegosaurus like this so what they are trying to represent is uh, the fossils okay so these are dinosaurs they have died so uh, brachiosaurus stegosaurus okay so we can write over here stegosaurus right then apart from that we have triceratops tri triceratops then we have tyrannosaurus okay tyrannosaurus but you will find uh, more names like crocodile over here so one is your uh, archaeopteryx for example mm, i'm writing here this archaeopteryx then we have crocodiles okay pteranodon crocodile pteranodon etc etc so uh, these all are the uh, different different examples almost all are extinct, extinct but you uh, just leave crocodile uh, from here but that is not extinct you can find it so this is a diagrammatic representation of fossils okay uh, and almost all of them are extinct now so now let me move ahead with geological time scale so let me put the heading over here why because we have to divide the time zones into uh, the time into time zones or time uh, uh, regions so geological time scale and i'm already marking it triple star this is going to be very important for you so the uh, longest one called as era then we have this period then we have we are going to have epoch then we are going to have age in millions of years okay m by means millions of years and the evolutionary events okay so what events took place uh, so uh, because we have very limited space over here so what we will be doing is uh, we will be dividing uh, them till the uh, till the bottom of our page somewhat like this and you do one thing you can write over here millions of years because we require this space for writing events because we have to mention all the events occurred right so give me few seconds so that i can just make it for you okay finally done so uh, let's divide them like this okay so uh, from the uh, from the bottom it is read it so it is read it like this first of all it has to be uh, you have to read it like this from lower to uh, up like this 
uh, in this direction okay so uh, the, it everything uh, began from archaeozoic era where uh, the very initial events of uh, life occurred or even you should not take the uh, name of life yet uh, after archaeozoic era that those are you know solar system uh, when we talk about nebular hypothesis uh, through nebular hypothesis it was explained about the solar system i'm talking the initial era was archaeozoic era archae means primitive so prior to the origin of animals what happened what not all those come into that uh, category but right now i'm more concerned uh, to begin it from proterozoic era and proterozoic uh, is also called by one more name that is and uh, that is pre cambrian so here i can write pre cambrian okay so now uh, this is divided into many uh, ages you have to talk about so i'm beginning with 4500 and then and then i'm saying 3500 so i'm using two different colors so that you are able to understand or uh, and see to the things Two five zero zero. Then we have one five double zero. Okay, and uh, then we are having this approximately seven hundred. So what I have done is I have just taken the approximation, approximate ages. So forty five hundred, thirty five hundred, twenty five hundred, fifteen hundred, and approximately half of it. So that's how it will be easy for us to remember. So they are not like this. Let me cl be clear, very clear to you. So if you are thinking that uh, we have written wrong or we have not written an exact uh, value, so we cannot learn uh, the exact values. Even if you can learn, you will not be able to remember them for a, a long period of time. So that's why I have written it this way. So at least whatever we are writing. at least we just uh, remember that to a certain extent so here uh, in this uh, this e uh, place you can write approximate origin of earth happened or you can write the name of galaxy also so origin of galaxy or earth you can say okay galaxy or even you can uh, take the name of earth just after 500 million years ago uh, after 500 million years of this then um 3 to 3.3 to 3.5 by so when you convert it in billion so you'll get to know that it can be written like this okay uh, like 3.3 to 3.5 billion years and this uh, here what happened is who uh, prokaryotes came prokaryotes appeared so around 3500 million years ago or 3.3 to 3.5 by prokaryotes appeared okay and then origin of uh, uh, accumulation of oxygen started happening here so accumulation of oxygen accumulation of oxygen happened and then 1.5 by a eukaryotes appeared so you can write over here eukaryotes right and then origin of animals took place so here we can write origin of animals took place okay so these were the events which happened in this era and now the another era which comes is your paleozoic paleozoic era paleozoic era okay so paleozoic era includes six uh, periods so here we can include cambrian cambrian okay then we have ordovician so then we can we are having ordovician then we are having silurian okay so now we are having this silurian then we have devonian so we can write over here devonian then we have carboniferous so we can write over here carboniferous right and then we have permian so i understand that these terms are difficult for you but then you have to remember them so cause uh, uh, cambrian ordovician silurian devonian carboniferous and permian 
these six we are going to talk about here okay so when we talk about there is no epoch they are not further subdivided so when you talk about the epoch the this age part so you just can begin with 550 then uh, you just round it off uh, 50 less so 500 okay so here i can write 500 then we can write 450 then we can write 400 400 then we can write 350 okay and now at the end of it we can write 300 okay so that's how we have again uh, taken the approximate ages uh, now in cambrian period there is origin of origin of invertebrates so here we can write origin of invertebrates and here you will be able to find marine algae for the first time as well you will be able to find means uh, they were found okay so marine algae apart from that uh, in the next uh, that means ordovician period it is called as age of invertebrates because invertebrates became dominant their number got increased they were found everywhere and here uh, this uh, uh, this algae also their number also got increased right so when i'm drawing this arrow you must understand that i am saying that they have increased okay the number has been increased and origin of jawless uh, fishes or jawless uh, you can say vertebrates was seen so the origin is seen so it is very much understood that uh, in the silurian period uh, there were there was increase in the number of jawless fishes obviously and origin of fishes occurred over here so we can write origin of fishes apart from that vascular plants vp i am writing because we are having less space so uh, vascular plants also originated over here and arthropods also started origin uh, also uh, appeared so the arthropoda is such a phylum which is considered as the largest phylum so uh, you have to understand that it just did not uh, big, uh, it, it just did not evolve just like that only that means it took time for its evolution right and uh, apart from that when we talk about devonian so it is considered as age of fishes because here the number of fishes increased okay this is very important devonian that is age of fishes it is uh, called as and here origin of amphibians is also seen so it was also seen so origin of amphibians and obviously now in next one that means carboniferous it is called as age of amphibians and origin of reptiles was seen so here you can write uh, origin of reptiles and apart from that forests of vp that means vascular plants it was also seen over here now uh, when i talk about the permian period so from where the story begins it ends there itself so here you uh, you will be able to see first of all reptiles number got increased right apart from that um, mammal like first mammal like uh, reptiles appeared first mammal like uh, reptiles appeared and then apart from that extinction of ver uh, invertebrates Extin extinction of invertebrates uh, was seen over here so this is also very important so uh, in this paleozoic era in era invertebrates uh, appeared and here uh, only in permian period their extinction happened and uh, here modern orders of insects also evolved so now i am moving on to third era which is mesozoic era and mesozoic era is considered as the age of uh, age of reptiles age of reptiles so rep i am writing that means reptiles now let's move on to the ages so after 300 less uh, if i uh, subtract 50 so 250 over here 
then we have this 200 and then we have again this as 150. So these are approximate ages when you get questions uh, if you are even getting the exact values so you can have an idea according to these values uh, so you can answer right. So now you can see that we have to talk about this part okay. So uh, here, first of all, uh, the period which they are divided into, they are called as Triassic. So here I can write for you Triassic and in this Triassic period, uh, first mammals and dinosaurs appeared and gymnosperms appear. Uh, there was origin of gymnosperms in Permian period only. So gymnos became dominant. First of all, gymnos number got increased. Apart from that, first mammals plus dinosaurs appeared. First mammals plus dinosaurs appeared. Okay. And then in the next one, which is Jurassic period, and you must have seen the movie Jurassic uh, Park. So here these uh, gymnos kept on dominating. So gymnos were very much in uh, many in number you can say and here uh, dinosaurs also became dominant so you can write like this and here first birds appeared so till now i had not taken the name of birds but now i have taken and mammals also uh, they were first appeared in mesozoic and in the last one now gymno after gymno ngos appeared so angiosperms appeared Okay, so I'm making a tick mark like this. They appeared now. And here, uh, there was extinction of dinosaurs. Again, the story from where it began, it is ending over there. So extinction of uh, dinosaurs and apart from that, modern insects, uh, modern uh, birds were also seen over here. So modern birds were also seen over here. So this was your Mesozoic uh, era and the last era which we are going to discuss is the most recent one Cenozoic era which is going on and if I talk about the period so you are going to divide into tertiary and quaternary. So here I am writing tertiary and tertiary has uh, Achha, wait, wait, wait. I have not written here uh, Cretaceous. Okay. So this third one was the Cretaceous for Mesozoic. Now, now we have tertiary period. Okay. So let me choose this color and I am writing here tertiary. Okay. Now, uh, when we talk about this, the so ages which we are picking, uh, they are like this 65, uh, 55. Okay, then we have 35, 45, you just uh, swallow it up. Then we have 25, okay. So this is 25 and this is your 5, okay. So now it is time to talk about tertiary period of Cenozoic era, right. So uh, first of all, you need to understand that uh, it was also divided in certain epochs. So tertiary is divided into uh, into Paleocene, Paleocene. Then we have then we have Eocene. So if uh, then uh, after that we have more so first of all let me tell you about paleocene so all dinosaurs they, they did not got they did not get extincted uh, except one which uh, all got extinct uh, except one which got uh, extincted 65 years ago and that is t-rex so here extinction of t-rex that is tyrannosaurus uh, tyrannosaurus rex happened and apart from that, mammals, pollinating insects, birds, all their number was increasing uh, in this era. 
then in eocene when you talk about eocene so here again ngo ngo sperms dominated so here the number of ngo sperms was more in fact in case of this one also um, which i'll just name it up so here also ngo sperms number was they were dominant okay and in case of uh, third one so that is oligocene so here you can write oligo oligocene here the first apes were um, were seen and after oligocene this there is miocene which i have already told you that there the angiosperms were dominant and the last one is pliocene okay so uh, here we can write pliocene where where uh, ape like ancestors were seen so we can write over here ape like ancestors for the first time they were seen over here and the last two epochs which are remaining are very important pleistocene and most recent one holocene so pleistocene and the most recent one holo holocene okay and in please uh, if you want to tell their ages so this is 1.8 and uh, so i'm rubbing this to write that age for uh, for this holocene okay uh just give me a minute hmm 0 0.01 0 0.01 so you can see that we have reached till the very recent period uh or era and in these two scene this is very very important because first humans appeared so um okay wait uh, ice ages uh, they were seen okay so you can write over here uh, ice ages appeared were seen over here humans appeared human uh, civilization was also seen so humans appeared okay and their civilization as well their civilization as well and in holocene the historic time that means akbar babar humayun you have read about them so uh, they represent our historic time humans historic time humans got it so please uh, read this chart because this is very important carboniferous is important from point of view of age of amphibians right so if you want me to mark important so this age of amphibians this age of fishes this age of invertebrates this is important then your prokaryotes eukaryotes obviously this pleistocene okay so uh, these all you have to anyhow remember right because they are asked in questions first mammal like reptiles when they came in permian uh, first mammals when they came and jurassic p uh, is very important because dinosaurs were dominant Miocene is considered as the golden age of mammals, golden age of mammals, and your Cenozoic is considered as age of mammals, age of mammals. Okay, so this was all about the geological time scale, and now it is time to talk about evolution of horse. So I am going to write uh, from the epoch. Okay, and then we will be talking about the evolved. horse evolved horse uh, its name uh, age okay height at the level of shoulders height at level of shoulders this also we can tell right and then wait so let me write age over here and then we have to talk about fore limbs hind limbs so fore limbs and uh, hind limbs and then um what else molars okay so let me now explain this to you 
this is going to be the last topic of our today's class because it will take a uh, it will take time to so here you are going to write the age and the name of evolved horse like this then height at the level of shoulders then about four limbs about hind limbs and about the molars teeth of the horse right so uh, let us see now we have to again go from bottom to uh, up bottom uh, to the above direction so i am starting from here from eo scene so here eo scene we can write then we can write oligo scene okay so we can write over here oligo scene then miocene we have so here we are writing miocene then we have pliocene pliocene and then we have we are going to have pleistocene and holocene okay so here you can go with that pleistocene pleistocene and holocene okay and the first horse which evolved was hyracotherium hyracotherium or eohippus similar to the name of eocene or it was also called as dawn horse because this it was the very first horse so dawn horse and after that orohippus came after this after this hyracotherium orohippus evolved so hippus term here we are using okay after that uh, after that myohippus evolved okay now uh, mesohippus evolved mesohippus and mesohippus is also called as intermediate horse and after that myohippus was evolved so in oligocene these two horses got evolved right like this after that in miocene in miocene parahippus got evolved and after that mary chippus mary chippus and just after that um, in pliocene in this one so let me write uh, it slightly upwards in pliocene pliohippus evolved and in between mary chippus which is called as a ruminating horse because it uh, was uh, able to do the rumination uh, it was able to chew or grass eating was done by him in between them one uh, horse was evolved which is called as callipus so it did not follow any uh, it did not follow the line of evolution and it got extincted this is why so this happened in miocene like this and pliohippus was considered as the first toed horse please remember pliohippus is considered as the first one toed uh, horse uh, who runs on just one toed uh, one toe and then we have this pleistocene and holocene so here your equus 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 that is your modern horse evolved which we have today so when we talk about ages so it is only 9 to 10 lakh years ago years ago this pliohippus is 1 crore years ago then these all in miocene these are 2 crore years back these have evolved then we have uh, 3 crore 
years back and then three to four crore years back so can you think it is a three four crore years old horse your hierarchotherium and when we talk about their height so it uh, at the level of soldiers and uh, shoulders uh, in centimeters so 150 centimeter here than 100 okay and then similarly 60 40 it's uh, it, it it is 120 sorry uh, this is 120 and then uh, 100 so this is going to be 160 centimeters and 40 okay so last we can write 40 centimeters now when it comes about the forelimbs and hind limbs so here they were having many toes uh, uh, so let me tell you that these kind of toes were there so when you draw the diagram of it like this so two three four five uh, and i should not use the term toes because we are uh, but we can use because this is a horse so that's why so this was a splint over here so this is splint that means reduced in reduced form okay so first one is there as a splint that means reduced form but then uh, here only three toes were there like this and that is you can see two three four and the last one is splint or reduced that means now fifth one is reduced okay so, so this same uh, kind of forelimbs they had but then uh, here their hind limbs when we talk about them so their third toe it got a bit longer now and now it is two three and four and same kind of forelimbs these have and they same kind of hind limbs they have and now this third toe has become the largest and still there are splints that means two and four they are reduced same diagram you are going to make over here also that means like this but right now they are covered by skin so this is how they are covered by skin fold but the your modern horse when it i talk about it so it has this largest toe third one mm, this splint also uh, which you can represent same way as you are representing the, this blue color so this is a uh, two and uh, four and the same diagram is going to be here okay so now first one toed horse uh, appeared as a pliohippus and then the recent the modern horse is also one toed where two and four are reduced so when i talk about the molars here there are small okay wait here there are small crowns okay and no serrations so the small crowns with no serrations exact patterns okay but then in another case up one up uh, this one small crown some serrations some serrations this one large crowns large crowns and well developed serrations were found so well developed uh, serrations were found okay and in the next one same all these things were found but well developed cement as well and the last they were highly suitable for grinding and they were having highly enamelated ridges so here enamelated ridges were also found these teeth and now modern horse has teeth highly suitable for grinding okay so this was all about the evolution of horse okay so i can write here for you evolution of horse got it right so now uh, it is done and if you want to ask that what kind of changes uh, what kind of uh, changes occurred during the evolution of horse so its brain capacity increased its molars got uh, uh, what you can say molars got uh, larger and more functional and the last three 
premolars also they um, at, they were functioning like molars only and their number of toes they got decreased their size of toe it got increased okay cerebral hemispheres developed the overall height also at the level of shoulders also increased as you can see from 40 to 150 so it was 40 this one was looking like a uh, like a dog okay but then uh, slowly and gradually it increased so these are all the changes uh, which occurred during the evolution of horse so you have to remember this okay and we are done with uh, today's lecture in which we have covered paleontological evidences very important topic geological time scale and apart from that uh, evolution of horse so please do revise it and learn all the uh, events which have happened in the course of evolution and do meet me uh, in the next lecture for continuing the same chapter so thank you for today and stay home stay safe stay healthy thank you so much